with over 24 years of experience in information security, risk management, e-commerce and networking, this is Shivangi Nadkarni, is the co-founder and CEO of Arca Consulting. She's also worked in companies like City and Wipro. She's authored the Privacy Book of Knowledge, which is the first ever book on data privacy in India. She's also a certified information security uh, system auditor, a certified information privacy professional, and a DSCL certified privacy professional. Thank you so much for being here, ma'am. It's a pleasure having you here. Uh, and a very Thank warm welcome. You, Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, to start with, could you please tell us something about your childhood and uh, how did your uh, interest towards information security develop? Oh, okay. So, um, so I, uh, I mean, I was just a regular uh, student. I always had a affinity for uh, quant. Like I would say I, you know, I really enjoyed math um, and uh, my uh, maths physics. Um, I didn't enjoy chemistry all that much. I struggled through it. And um, well, at the back uh, long ago, many decades ago, when I was graduating, the only options that uh, you know, good students were supposed to take up were uh, pretty much engineering, medicine, and so on, yes. right? So, uh, so I decided to do a degree in engineering, and I wanted yes. to go to uh, you know a good college. So I, uh, you know, worked very hard for my twelfth and made sure I went to Bits Bilani. So, uh, yes. so that's why I had information security. I mean, just had exposure to computers in my uh, 11th and 12th. Okay, so I just about learned a little bit of programming with no intention of working in this field at that point in time. It didn't even exist. So it was just uh, something which I thought I should do something in, in quant and engineering. And that's how I ended up, uh, you know, deciding to go to BITS. Uh, yeah. That's great, ma'am. So you worked at companies like Sifri and Wipro. So how was the experience there? So, um, so I'm going to take a step back and also tell you that when I graduated from Bits, I didn't want to work in a tech field at all. Okay. okay. And um, so I went to IIM Calcutta and I did a management degree and I wanted to, uh, you know, do consumer marketing, which was very, very. Uh, you know, everybody sort of wanted to do it at that point in time. And I wanted to do what everyone else wanted to do. Uh, but uh, life took turns that I, uh, you know, finally I, I was in SIFI when SIFI was a startup at a time when the word startup was not being used at all. It was just a new company and everybody thought I was, you know, a little off in my head to join a company that was not established at that point in time. But I was the fifth employee and uh, it was fun because, you know, the company was being set up. I stayed there for 10 years. Um, I ended up uh, being a part of the whole revolution of the internet being born in India. You know, wow. the first, uh, it was the first information, ISP and uh, uh, then the, they decided. So while I was at SIFI, they... Uh, the company decided to bring in something called digital signatures into the country. So today it's taken for granted, but this was back in 99 when, uh, you know, today to replace your physical signatures, you have the concept of digital signatures. And digital signatures are uh, something that uh, are embedded in cryptography. So it uses basic cryptography to sign. So that's when I first got exposed to cryptography and security and stuff like that. And, and how all of that uh, is used, uh, you know, it's related to law and government, you know, so the government uh, makes laws and regulations that allow certain types of things that are implemented in technology. So that whole thing I got exposed to at that time. And that's where the interest in uh, information security started, I would say. That's really interesting, ma'am. So what made you quit these companies and start your own venture, Arka? <laughs> so, well, you know, I uh, remember I said I joined Safi. I was the fifth employee. Mm -hmm. 
then uh, five years down the line when this new digital signature thing was being set up it was again a totally new project so within a large company i was again starting from scratch and uh, then i moved to wipro and wipro was a very large organization and after a while i realized that it is not my dna to work in very large setup my heart lay in creating something from scratch and being a part of that so i decided i have to do something on my own that's and great that's why i started off yeah so i'm really excited to know more about arka consulting so what is arka consulting then okay so um arka it by the way arka means sunshine in sanskrit okay so um arka basically works in the field two fields of information security cyber security on one hand and data privacy on the other okay so they're actually for most people they they mean one and the same thing but actually they're two different fields okay so uh we basic um, so in a way uh, so what do we do as a company we enable organizations to implement and manage security and privacy within their company so you know so for example when uh, you get you use today apple as a phone right and uh, when you use apple there's so many privacy features on ios and you know i'm sure you read about it about how they you know create this now for that to happen there is so much that needs to happen within a company and so that's what we do you know like that we help lots of companies what they need to do inside so that people like you and me as individuals as customers as consumers can use privacy and can implement privacy okay. and security okay. yeah so um, how was the experience writing that book on uh, data privacy in india oh that was uh, interesting basically because uh, you know uh, i was uh, i did that it's not my own publication i did it as a, a project for the data security council of india which is a nascom body which represents industry so it's actually their publication it was just outsourced to me so uh, interestingly when uh, you know when i was asked to write the book i was used to making documents as part of my work and mm -hmm. i thought okay this is just an extension of that and so i happily okay. said yes um, and uh, i was asked to make a plan project plan as to how long i would take and i made a very ambitious plan that i would finish writing the book in 3 months okay and uh, uh, what really happened was that at the end of those 3 months i had barely finished one chapter out of 10 chapters <laughs> so no it was a very uh, very interesting experience which is a completely new field very little uh, reference points um and uh, you know writing through all of that writing in a manner which is flowing rather than in a very point wise manner that is what we do in the corporate world and uh, but it was fun i learned a lot Uh, both are about the domain and about writing books so i really really enjoyed That's it and i really wish i could nice. uh, another book again yeah yeah okay here a part of asia board of iapc is the asia advisory board of iapc so what is it like to be the part of such an organization and what are the song language about good question so iapp is the international association of privacy professionals it's the largest uh, privacy body in the world and uh, basically it uh, uh, it trains you know builds a lot of knowledge about privacy so uh, because in asia currently so they have these advisory boards uh, across asia europe uh, americas and so on to uh, get professionals to come in and give their inputs about what's going on in the market what's going on in the region and to comment on what offerings they need to do new products that they need to develop um, you know just basically an advisory position so um, at the asia level we look at asia uh, and asia currently is going through a lot of uh, 
you know developments in the field of privacy so it's very interesting um, and uh, so yeah, it's a forum that helps you interact with your peers across uh, Asia as well as uh, some of the global folks you understand what's going on uh, globally and you learn a lot and you contribute also Okay, that's great, ma'am. So, how do you think we can manage our privacy in this era? There are a lot of things are to be done. Good question. I mean, there is some so much that you and I can do as individuals. Um, for example, uh, be very careful. Basics, the basics don't change. They're not going to change, okay? So yes. be careful about uh, what you post online. Remember that it is going to be there forever, okay? There's no question of it ever getting erased. You may erase it. You may think it's gone, but it's not there. So be very careful what you post online, what you share mm -hmm. online, always. Be very, very sensitive about any personal information about you that you share you know okay. when i say personal uh, it's not just uh, you know information you're not just your name stuff about your family where you study etc but you should be extremely careful about any financial information any health information about people not just you with your family members be very sensitive about what you share outside ask if someone asks you, you know, today somebody, you go into any store or anywhere, people just say, give me your mobile number, right? Mm -hmm. And without yes. thinking, you give that mobile number. So ask, yes. uh, why do you really need that mobile number? Don't just randomly give out your mobile number, right? So people can track you. Secondly, uh, be very careful about the sites you visit. Uh, be very very careful about the apps you download don't just randomly download all the apps and let them be there on your phone okay uh, like once a quarter do what i call spring cleaning of your phone you know or make sure that any app you haven't used in three months or two months please delete it minimize the apps you have on your phone because your phone knows exactly what you do at all points in time and all apps on it know exactly what you do at all points in time. So think about whether you really want the world to know what is going on with you and your family, not just you, at all points in time. And it's not just the app. They share it further with hundreds of people. Okay. So, you know, you may think you have downloaded a shopping app or a gaming app, right? But while you're playing the game, that gaming app has something has something called third parties, external parties. Uh, there'll be some 30, 40, 50 of them embedded in that. So you all of them are watching you and all of them have access to your data. And that's why when you say, for example, you know, you talk about, let's say, a book with a friend and you suddenly start seeing ads on your Insta feed or your uh, Facebook feed or, you know, because it's all connected and you're being watched so just remember you're being watched at all points in time i've done a tedx talk on this i'll be happy to share that with you um which explains what yeah that was some really wonderful advice ma'am even i'll try to follow your advice and um, like a lot of kids nowadays have social media handles and so could I give some tips to them on how they can manage their privacy there? A lot of kids have social media handles. Yeah. yeah. So all social media, if you see, have sections called security and privacy in the yes. settings. Right. So first of all, when you set up your social media handle, go and switch off everything. Okay. In terms of limit the access to just your friends or maximum friends of friends to your content limit uh, where you can go out and you know where data is being shared um, okay. limit ad, limit your profiling so wherever there's an option to turn off stuff turn it all off okay? okay you can always go back and turn it on later if at all you feel that is required so that's okay. the first second be very very careful about what information you share on your social media handles mm -hmm. okay don't don't pick a fight don't have uh, don't say mean things okay just think i mean 10 15 years later somebody who's interviewing you for a job or you know uh, uh, you for anything else 
they're going to come back and see something stupid you did 10 years back. Do you want that to really happen? You don't. You can't erase it. Okay, so be very sensitive about that. I would say just remember your personal data is very, very precious and it is the most expensive commodity in the world and people are willing to pay whatever it takes to get hold of that data, whether it is the good guys or whether it is the cyber criminals. So just be very careful about it. Okay, just as you guard money, you have to guard your data with equal um i would say value it has the same or if not more value really interesting ma'am and, and be very careful about photographs as well okay so wherever in social media you have an option to lock your photographs lock, mm -hmm. uh, you know prevent downloads mm -hmm. stuff like that you must do it okay. what challenges did you face and how did you overcome them uh see the challenges are always there uh no matter what you do okay so uh, just as you face challenges with you know trying to balance school and your activities and making sure you're you know you get good grades and etc etc right so this similar challenges keep on um, happening um you just have to uh, go with the confidence build the confidence that you can handle them and if you decide you want to do something you can always do it you'll find a way to do it so there is nothing called impossible right yes. so we're all not doing brain surgery and nor are we doing something which is sending us into space everything else is you can find a way to do it just that you have to work hard sometimes take a deep breath sometimes take a pause you know say that i'll come back and revisit this after um Two, two, two days or whatever after a break or something you find it second uh, i think uh, uh, my friends and what i call a larger community of sisterhood you know uh, it's very important to have them so build relationships nurture them over the years and ask for help they're the ones who come back and help you so uh, so always make sure that you contribute to other people's lives don't just always check uh, you know go with this thing of what's in it for me um, always contribute so so when you have a challenge other people will help you just as when other people have challenges you should go out and help them right oh, and that's be fine. Great, so mom what was your success mantra I don't know if I have a single success mantra and I think it changes with time. Uh, so initially maybe success mantra is, uh, initially you look at success as something by which you do, uh, you know, you kind of meet a deadline or something like that. Then as you grow older, you uh, see a wider world and then your success yes. changes. Um, for me, it's always been how much of an impact I can make on, in, on the world around me um, in a way that is positive, in an area which is new and stuff like that. So I've always worked in areas which are new and innovative because that's what keeps me going. But that's not true for everybody. Everybody has their own uh, mechanism and uh, everybody yes. has their own mantra for success. And there's no right or wrong. Everything is right. Right. So you just need to find what works for you. And um, it can change, yeah. most importantly. It will change with time and it's okay to change. You don't have to be fixated on one. Okay, ma'am. So any piece of advice for anyone who is aspiring to uh, work in this field? In the field of cybersecurity and yes. data privacy? Um, just make sure, one, you need to have a good technology uh, grounding. And by that, I don't mean you have to do a technology degree. But you need to have a good tech grounding and also uh, a little bit of a broader view, you know, so don't be very narrow. And that I think is not just cybersecurity, actually any profession to do well, while you need to build depth and expertise in specific areas, you also need to build a perspective, you know, so it's good, cultivate your hobbies, read, 
do what you enjoy you know people have different hobbies meet different people because meet people from different walks of life because the more people you meet you hear different ways that people look at the world and sometimes a solution comes to you which is which you wouldn't have thought of if you were just within your circuit right so i would say for cyber security stay put get a good technology grounding get lots of experience so works work with the uh, uh, organizations who will give you that exposure because it's a vast field and uh, uh, i mean and it's you know keep an eye on what's good read a lot about what's going on in the world and uh, you'll be fine that's wonderful ma'am so lovely so ma'am it was really fun having you here and i really learned a lot to be honest like it was a very uh, it was a very informative session for me and thank you so much for taking out your uh, precious time for us thank you so much ma'am thank you so much for inviting me and wish you all the best and all the best to all of you who are thank watching you. this as well yeah thank you so much ma'am bye 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 ma'am